I'd like to invite to speak to us someone who I really, I respect. He doesn't really talk a lot, but when he talks, you know that God has laid something on his heart. And I'd like to invite Steve to come and share what his heart is with us this morning. So can we appreciate Steve this morning? That's why. <laughs> oh dear. Good job I wasn't worried about this. It was um, it was really helpful actually for Sophie to come up and share what she shared because um, I want to talk this morning. I, I, I occasionally get rolled out to do an update on church finances and to give you a report back and stuff like that, and, and I really don't want to do that this time. But I do want to talk about resources. I do want to talk about our inheritance that God has given us. And you just saw a practical example of resources being balanced with spirit. With heart and love being balanced with resources. And that's the reality, isn't it? You know, God's put us in this world. And it is a balance of the practical that is needed alongside the spiritual stuff. And, and that's what I really, that's the heart of why I wanna, what I want to share this morning. Um, that what we are stewarding can be a blessing to the world. It can bring kingdom life to the world. Um, because the reality is, Margaret touched on it this morning. I quite like this phrase. Basil used it the other day. But it's really, it's really paraphrasing what Paul, uh, Paul said in Timothy. Um, Money makes a poor God, but it does make a useful tool used for kingdom purposes. And so that's the challenge I want to sort of think about this morning is, is how we are stewarding the world to bless it. Um, and I want to get a bit, bit of background. God gave me, God's been dumping a lot of stuff on me, so some of this may not make sense. I'm trying to pull a lot of bits together, and I'm not quite sure I've got it all together, but I'll be totally honest. So pray for me as I'm talking here that what comes out, Holy Spirit wants me to share with you. Because there's, there's just so much in my mind that I need to, I need the Holy Spirit to really be clear to put all those bits together. And I want to use, I think it's really useful to use some real life examples. So as I go through the talk, at the end, I, I want to use some things that you and, you and I know about, have heard about, people we know, and so I want to do that at the end because I think it's always really useful to give testimonies about what God has done. And that's, that's some of the stuff I want to do. So you've heard a lot from Paul, Paul Franklin, from Phil, from Remy have been talking over the last few weeks about the authority that God has given us. Yeah? It's, we've spoken a lot about that, about our inheritance, who we are, our identity, and that, for me, is fundamental when we start talking about 
resources. So let, let me just going to go right back to the beginning, and I go back to Genesis. Genesis 1, verse 28. God commanded Adam to go forth and multiply, didn't he? Be fruitful and subdue the earth. So to be clear, fruitful is not procreate. Fruitful is to be a blessing, to bring kingdom life into this place. Multiply was the multiply bit. <laughs> and to go and, and then this was the bit that um, I quite liked as well. One of the first jobs that God gives to Adam is to name the animals. He brought the animals to him. He wanted Adam to be a co-creator with him. That was his original plan with it for us, to be a creator. He created us as imaginative designers, as creators to work alongside him. Because in the end of that passage, when it says, go forth, multiply, and what does it say then to do? Subdue the earth. So I quite like the way Paul phrased it, and listen back to some of his talks. Um, he talked about it being cultivating the earth. And when you think about that, I, 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 perhaps I'm just a bit dim, but when I actually thought about what that meant, and I went right back to the beginning, um, I, I kind of had this light bulb moment that when God put Adam and Eve, he put him in the Garden of Eden, which was part of the earth. But that was the bit where he had put his kingdom in Eden. It wasn't on the rest of it. And I was like, oh, okay. I kind of, I, I, being dim, I just thought the earth was sort of created perfectly, but it wasn't. He'd, he'd actually told Adam and Eve to go and cultivate, to take the kingdom culture from Eden and subdue, cultivate the rest of the earth. So he designed us to kind of solve problems alongside him. And of course, then comes the, well, the devil was actually already on earth, wasn't he? He was already a fallen angel. I have no idea what the rest of his state, the rest of the earth was, but all I do know is God wanted to partner with man to take kingdom to the whole earth. That was his original design for us. He'd given us the ability to create, to design, to solve problems. But of course we know what happened. We know that Adam and Eve gave up their authority. The devil came and tempted them and the keys to the kingdom, the authority to subdue the earth, to go and cultivate the earth was handed over at that point to the devil. And in fact, we, we know that because when Jesus, in Luke 4, if you look at Luke 4, um, that was when Jesus was in the wilderness and Satan comes to him and he tempts him. That's one of the first things Satan did was tempt Jesus and he wanted to be worshipped. That was fundamentally what Satan still wants is to be worshipped. And Jesus, and so what did he do? He came to him and he offered him the keys to the kingdom. The keys that he had taken from Adam and Eve at the beginning, the authority that we had had to subdue the earth, to cultivate, to bring kingdom culture, the devil was offering back to Jesus. That's what he was doing. And Jesus, of course, we know the rest of the story. Jesus, no way. No way, dude. That ain't going to happen. And of course, we know the rest of the story. When Jesus went to the grave, he rose up with those keys again. With that authority. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. He's put those keys, that authority to bring kingdom culture to the earth back in your hands when he rose from the grave. Just to put here, if you think about it, that was God's intention. He created a place of beauty and splendor, still occupied by Satan. He put them in the middle of a problem. He gave them the creative ability and authority to solve those problems. He's given those back to you now. So you might say, well, that's, that's all very well, but what's that got to do with kingdom resources? Um, and I, I think it's got quite a lot to do because if you don't understand your inheritance and what God originally intended for you, it's difficult for you to get your head around who you are. 
Yeah? He created us in his image. He created us as designers, as creators, as problem solvers. Um, and I think it's quite helpful to try and think about this. And, and in today's culture, we can get caught in some traps. Um, and if, has anyone read Culture of Honor? A um, few people have in here. And I really quite like the way Danny Silk, he talks about, um, it's like a, a mentality that you have with resources or money or whatever it may be. How do you respond to money? How do you handle money? And he, t he gives this uh, description of how a king or a queen would handle money versus someone that lives in poverty. What mentality would they have? And of course, the mentality of the king and queen, if they're, if they're operating as a good king, they have limitless resources. But their aim is to bring beauty into that kingdom. Their aim is to bring richness and fruitfulness into the place that they are ruling. That's, the, that's, their head, that's where their head's at. They're not thinking about, oh my goodness, where's the next meal going to come from? They are thinking in that way. Whereas when you come at the other end of the scale and you think with a poverty mentality, no matter how much you've got, you're just always thinking about preservation. You're thinking about how I can protect, how I can uh, stop myself getting into problems in the future. And so with, we, we think, with, and if you think like that, you're not thinking as the way God originally intended you, and it can make you freeze when God gives you the opportunity to go and bless. Because God might say, you know, I'd really like you to bless that person. And you go, I, I can't. I, I haven't got the money to do that. God doesn't work like that. He really doesn't, because if he's telling you to do that, and you do that, for sure, God's going to bless you back. And I don't want this to be some kind of wealth preach. That, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, there's a lot of preaching out there, and then there's a lot of misuse of monies in churches. Uh, well, that's bad stuff. But equally, sometimes I've seen the other end of the scale where people can say, well, you can only be spiritual if you're really poor. <laughs> I, I, I don't get that. There's a balance of how we steward and, and how we manage money. So if you think about it, um, I, I kind of looked at this, and, and I think the, parab uh, the, the parable where Jesus gives the talents to the servants that kind of sums up a bit of mentality in my mind. He gave three servants, one ten, one five, one one. Most of you will know the story. The, the two that were given the most actually went out. They were very creative, and they made a profit. And Jesus went, that's fantastic. You know, the, the master came back and said, that's fantastic. You've used your resources wisely. You've been creative with them. But the one who had one, what did they do? Uh, they buried it. They buried it. He'd failed to, re to, to respond and react cr creatively at all. He didn't even have the foresight to put the money in the bank. He just buried it in the ground. And that's the challenge to us, isn't it? He acted with a poverty mentality. He acted with a, a spirit of fear. He didn't want to lose it. <coughs> so I'm not going to go out and risk it. I'm not going to do what God's told me to do. I'm just going to hide it in the ground. Because at least then I've still got it. That, that was his mentality. And so I was very much kind of more of a poverty mentality. And you might think, well, how, how, does, how does that relate to me? But I think in Western society, we really can think like that. We're actually slightly trained to do that. Because the world tells us to be sensible. The world tells us to be cautious. You know, be very careful with your money. Be very wise with your money and everything else. And, 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 and I've spoken to a few people before where if you talk about things like Let's make it quite personal. Talk about things like giving and tithing, for example. I've heard people actually go through the process and think about the process in terms of, here's my incoming, here's my outgoings, here's what I've got left, how much can I afford to give to God? Um, that, that's how some people think. You may think like that. I don't know. But all I can tell you is all his. It's all his. He's the priority. Who do you think has given you the ability to make the money in the first place? He's giving you those gifts, hasn't he? That's what he's given you. So don't get caught in the poverty mindset trap of thinking, I can't afford. Because that's just not the way God's 
kingdom resourcing works. It really isn't. So I just want to quickly touch on the word resources, because um, I think it's easy to think of resources and just think of money, but I think it's, it's much, much uh, deeper than that, for sure. In Deuteronomy, it says, but remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which we swore with your ancestors, as it is today. The ability to make money isn't some kind of magical process to reproduce pounds or euros or whatever your flavor of currency is. It's the ability for you to work creatively with him to generate wealth. It's what you do with that wealth that becomes the question. And Jesus referred to the... Uh, Jesus referred to the... To the person that handles money well. Um, so it is all about the stewardship of wealth and how that can be used for the benefit of others. And if you look back at Solomon, um, I won't read this all out, but the summary of it is, is that Solomon didn't actually ask for wealth. What did Solomon ask for? Wisdom. wisdom. So he asked for wisdom, which is actually really the key to producing wealth, because if you have God's blueprint downloaded and God's mind, and heaven's mind, and kingdom mind, then he can create, he can give you solutions to things. He can put you in places. He can, uh, he, he just can, that's the experience I've had, that he can bless you when you trust him. He's, God is looking for the motives behind our heart. He wants us to operate with a kingdom mindset. He wants us to be contributors in today's society, in all, fear, uh, all, all spheres, Think of the job. Like there are people in here. There are scientists. There are teachers. There are doctors. There are nurses. There are, there are engineers. There is so much creativity in this place. You might not think of that as creative, but it is hugely creative. God can give us the ability to do these things and influence the world that we're in, the families that we're in, the, the jobs that we're in, the culture we're in, a culture change to bring kingdom life. So I, I, I thought it would be really helpful to... Um, to give just a real life example, this isn't in our church, this is, this is from history. So, 10 points for whoever comes up with what this is to start with. Any ideas? It's a little, little clue in the bottom corner. Oh, go back one. Bourneville. There's a swimming pool there. So this is one of the original photos taken from, the, from uh, Bourneville and Cadbury's. If you don't know about Cadbury, George Cadbury, you should. They were, they were Quakers. They were God-fearing, spirit-filled individuals. They changed culture with their resources. Hands up who's been to Cadbury World. A few of you. It's a fantastic place. Birthed out of... God's vision that this guy had. God had given him a vision. He massively changed culture. This, this was designed back in the early 20th century. It's like 1905. This guy was given a vision to take people. If you go back to the Victor end of Victorian times, people were living in inner cities. They were living in the most atrocious conditions, absolute poverty, in slums in the inner city. Generally was where these guys were operating factories. Cadbury had a vision to completely change that. He wanted to take the factory out of the middle of the city and he wanted to put it into the countryside because he believed that, he could, that, that the people that were working with him and partnering with him would have such a better quality of life than in the smog-filled industrial sites in the city. And he invested and bought a big plot in Birmingham which is now is Cadbury World, and created some real groundbreaking, excellent properties with toilets. They had hospitals. They had schools. They had swimming pools, an indoor swimming pool. That was unheard of then. He created cricket clubs. They would have prayer meetings every morning, worship time together. He created a little bit. It might, to me, that's just a little bit of kingdom on earth. 
that he created. Cadbury's was recently um, taken over with the Americans, but it was valued at 12 billion pounds. So do you think God blessed Cadbury? Sure. And if you go back, to, and, and I, I, I don't know if it's true, but when I listened to the description of how they made Cadbury's dairy milk, which is my favorite chocolate, he was given a way of doing something that no one else had ever thought about. A completely radical way to create this particular blend and silkiness and everything else and the taste that you and I know now. Was it God given? I kind of like to think so. But he blessed Cadbury for sure because Cadbury showed his willingness to partner with God to bring culture change into that place. So let's talk about a little bit more about those. So to have that picture of Cadbury creating dairy milk in the first place, I don't know whether it was... I, I, I love the thought that it's God that gave him the, the creative ability to do that. I really do. Um, and just to talk, talk about those, Matthew 13, verse 11. This is talking... This is, this is the disciples asking Jesus, why do you always talk in parables? And he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. <coughs> God's got mysteries, the unseen stuff, banked, ready for us to access. He's given us access to godly designs. It's a heaven's blueprint for certain things. Maybe it's your job, maybe it's your family. I don't know, but I'm telling you, he will give you access to heavenly thinking if you ask him. So I want to, again, start taking it down a little level, make it a little bit more relevant to each of us. So I was really pleased that Richard and Tabby could um, minister to us. It was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? If you were here, it was a brilliant time, and, and, and they shared. I don't want to make them too embarrassed, but um, when God prophesied, Richard shared a little bit about some of the prophetic words that had been spoken over them. And I'll remind you what was spoken. And for those who didn't see that, these guys are producing a musical which we believe will be bring the kingdom story to the globe. That's about it in summary. And they've got ministries within that. And some of the stuff that was prophesied was key players to shift culture. <coughs> Stewards of worldwide revival. You'll be entrusted with millions. A new realm of creativity and vision is coming. That was some of the stuff that was spoken over Tabby and Richard. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff, isn't it? It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. And you think, oh, yeah, well, goodness me. But let me also highlight that that vision was something that Richard was given 18 years ago. He's been working and walking faithfully in stepping into that. It hasn't been a bang overnight. I'm not saying God can't do it overnight, but he's working with the creative resources that God is downloading to him constantly and Tabby to be able to put that into practice. And I can tell you now, I mean, I, I've I was, if, I go, if we go back six years when we were looking at Brighton and Wembley, uh, Bro when we were looking at Brighton in the original um, production, the original premiere, when I look at then what we did with Wembley Arena, I just go, wow, when I look back, because j just to throw some figures out there, if we had wanted to do that production in Brighton and Wembley now and hi had to hire the people to do it, it would cost well over a million pounds to do that. When I look back at actually how much we had to spend on it, it was less than half of that. It was less than half of that. And there are instances where God just provided the resources. So when we talk about accessing heaven's resources, here's a real practical, for me, a practical example of what was happening. Do you know, when we, uh, we, we were 
we, we were basically offered sort of five people's time for free. They were flying people over from the US. No, nothing to do with us. We hadn't asked. People had come to us, some, um, some American missionaries, and said, we believe God's in this. We want to offer you our interns. We want to offer you our time. And these were skilled theater people as well, marketing people as well. And God just blessed us in ways that, when we look back on it now, it was just stunning. Yeah, one of the other practical, I mean, here's just a, an example. One of the, um, some of you have been here. This is where we rehearsed down in Perfleet. This is the Royal Opera House rehearsal venue. It's a huge space. It was probably the only space, I think, or one of the only spaces, unless you went to a massive film studio in, in South England, where, where we could actually get the stage into the venue. It was enormous. And God gave us that for literally a fraction of what we should have paid. There was holy connections made, and it just happened to be free when we needed it. Wow, okay. This is the type of thing that would have cost, I can't remember what the exact figures, but it was probably 20, 20 to 30,000 to hire it for the weeks we were in there, and it ended up costing us a tenth of that. That's just to give you, uh, for me that was just a testimony of, of, of how God can provide it just was. I mean, this is, this is, this is what it was like. This, this is just a bit of a video that I don't mean Richard's saying. It's an enormous space that goes up, I don't know. It's huge. Absolutely huge. Brilliantly done. It was just a fantastic sp space. Uh, and in that space, we worshipped with the cast. We brought kingdom life into that place. We created, we deliberately wanted to create a kingdom culture. Um, and we were given access to BBC, Songs of Praise. It's, you know, some of you, have, have, you know, were here when we were going through that type of stuff. It was just, oh, it, was, it was an amazing time. doesn't make it any easier now. We're going through challenging times now because, you know, we've got a vision to take it out to the US. And the, the whole resource requirement there is oh, just up another level. So continue to pray for us, but from where God has taken us, I, I really don't have any doubt that God's going to take us in the future with what he's prophesied. We're just working that through now, seeking his blueprints, knowing when to move and who to, you know, what doors to push. I want to take it even more personally. Do you know where that is? It's here. These were the guys that built this building that you're sitting in now. Yeah? Doesn't look quite the same, does it? Here's a few shots. That's what it did look like. And that's Brian standing. And that's the kitchen, right? And that's the sports hall where we've got the classrooms above now. And that was the old hall just to the left here, which was the classroom, which was just about here. So why am, I, why am I telling you this? Because I believe it was a, a real testimony of miraculous provision. It really was. Um, and for those of you that don't, I know many will know the story, but if you don't, I'm going to spend two minutes telling you because we were, we, we, we knew that God wanted us to have a place to call our home and we had wisely put resources aside in preparation for that. But when we came, when he directed us to this building, the trustees wanted pretty much the same price that we had put away, which sounds great, but in fact then we had no resources to then convert it and build it into what you see now. And so I remember being in a leaders meeting in Brian's house at Broadway, and we spent, I don't know, maybe an hour going around with all different ideas until some bright spark said, why don't we just pray about it? <laughs> well, okay. There's a novel idea, but we thought, uh, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> so we, uh, we stopped, we waited, I don't know, 10 minutes? And then God said, I want you to ask for it for free. Really? Yeah. And that's what we did. We went to the trustees. We spoke to them. And in fact, what happened was that God gave each of them. These guys were 90 plus. 
interested. But they had birthed this place. They had vested spiritual inheritance in this place. And God came to them in a dream one night, all three of them, and said, I want you to give it to these guys. And that's what happened. So where you're sitting now, I truly believe, was miraculous provision. God spoke to those guys. And so I was, it, it's just, we could then use the resources that we had to, to develop and design and solve problems. Because this was a bit of a problem, this place. It wasn't quite what you see now. And so uh, it, it's just been, it's been such a blessing and we hope and con- that it will continue to be a blessing to the congregation. Oh. And more than anything, I'm, I'm really excited about the people that God is drawing together in here. I'm really excited about that. And some of the stuff that he's doing to bring kingdom life into our jobs, our families, the world around us. We've heard some testimonies this morning. God designed us to be creative, to be solution bringers. I believe that God will release resources to you in your dreams and visions. Remy said it earlier today, Al. Vision is to see everyone become all that God has called them to be. And that will be... He will give you some bold visions. I know of several in this room that are involving the cities, the nations, and others. And I want to encourage you in that. If God has given you the blueprint for that, he will provide the resources for that. That's my prayer this morning. And uh, I, w- I want to finish now. Um, and I want to do something... Um, God gave me this on Wednesday, and it was one of those moments where I was, I was just finishing some bits off, and this, w- I don't often get kind of really obvious words. And I spent the last four days discussing that with God, shall we say. Say, are you sure about that? Because that sounds a bit wacky <laughs> and mad, and I, are you really sure? Because that's totally countercultural to us. Well, certainly to me. Um, I kind of thought, well, if God said it that clearly, I'm just going to have to do it. So please, please take this in the spirit that is intended, all right? Um, I'm not going to make anyone dance, don't worry, or anything like that. It'd be too creative. But I did want to to, um, finish with a practical way of doing something because I believe God wants to invest in us. He wants to bless us. He wants us, more importantly, to bless others. Yeah? So I, I'm going to... God basically said to me, I want to... I want to give £10 to every person in the room, which is why you can understand I was having a bit of an argument with God <laughs> about this. But I'm like, uh, okay. So please, I'm going to do that. I, I want to do that. Uh, this, this will make everyone feel incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I totally get that, because you will not be expected to, but I want you to receive it as a token, yeah? <laughs> some, are, some are less uncomfortable than others. <laughs> the only condition is you don't bury it in the ground. I know it's only a small amount, <laughs> but don't bury it, and I want you to ask God during the week, what, are you, what does he want you to do with that? It may, be to ble- it may be to bless you and your family. It may be for you to bless others. But I want you to be listening to Holy Spirit as to what to do with that resource. So, I will do it. Margaret, I'm just going to... Margaret, I'm just going to dump the offering down here. Right? Okay, everyone feeling suitably uncomfortable? <coughs> All right. Anyone, anyone, anyone want to give me, give me a hand? Joe, could you give me a hand as you... <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel that you have to. If you really are uncomfortable, don't take it. I'm not forcing you. But I'm offering it to you because I believe God wants to give us 
a, a symbol of his, of his resource, basically. So, Remy, do you want to... Clay, you don't want to hand that out? Has everyone who wants £10 got £10? <laughs> He'll come round. So as you're taking that, I'm just going to pray. Father... I pray you, you will use your resource, Father, for blessing, for fruitfulness, for encouragement. Father, I pray that you help us know who we are in you. Father, that you're giving us access to kingdom resources. Father, I pray now that you will download your blueprints to people in this room for visions that you have given them, that you will fill in details. Father, you will give creative minds, creative hearts to go out into the world, to take kingdom life into the families, into our communities, into our jobs, and into this nation. So, Father, I just pray a real blessing over people that... Um, that this will be an exciting week that you can use uh, everyone in this church to bless the world around us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I don't think God does time scales, to be honest. Uh, up to you. I, I, I have no other conditions apart from don't bury it in the ground. Use it as God tells you. Just keep asking God.
going to ask Danny to come out. Um, we're going to, we want to pray for Steve. He's done something very symbolic. and that's, I would struggle with the, the Lord, not because of um, the amount that it will end up being, but just the whole idea um, itself. But we just want to honor you for taking that bold step. Danny. Uh, good day, everyone. Um, I didn't plan to come out, but um, I just felt I have to. Um, 
Thank you so much for that which you did. In fact, when he was speaking, my heart was like, okay, let me start getting ready for how much I would, I would, I would uh, <laughs> you know, uh, give unto the Lord because that's what I felt might happen. But you see, God loves us so much. It's just an aspect to show us that he loves us. And sadly, at times, we are not ready to receive. And that's why we're uncomfortable. And uh, I want to pray for Steve for such response to the Lord because it's not easy. When God gives an instruction, it's always not easy to obey. But it touched my heart so much that he did that. And it's almost brought tears to my eyes. Not because the amount is too big, but just because of what he has done. And we know the sacrifice that he has done. So let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we commit into your hands, Steve. We ask, oh God, that you will enrich him. Even as he has taken the step, oh God, that you will open the doors of heaven. And our Lord God, you will bring upon him your anointing and your power to make wealth in a different dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray that God, your power will rest upon him. And I know God, every challenge is on his way. You will clear it. Bring upon him great favors. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you because you are a practical God. And you have taught us again that with you, all things are possible. Make it, oh God, great in our life. Thank you for this church and for what you are doing, for the teachings and for the things we are receiving. Lord, we pray that God, you will continue to make open doors unto us in the name of Jesus. Bless our brother, oh God. And I pray that God, you bless each and every one of us as we have responded to this in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I release you. I, I, there's an invitation that I'm going to ask um, Vicky to come and give. I know your throats are dry. We all want to get tea and coffee. Uh, but just give us one more second, then you're released. This is an invitation for everybody. Saturday, 25th of November. Um, uh, I am celebrating a birthday along with somebody else, but that is not really the full point. Um, I came across this Christian group they're called Echo, and they are absolutely brilliant. And I wanted to bring them to you to, for you to enjoy this group. And I prayed to the Lord, can you help me afford it? Because, you know, it's money. So... God said yes, and he has helped me afford it. So I'm bringing the group to you, this Christian group, and it's 
on 25th of November on a Saturday from seven, seven o'clock onwards. There'll be finger food there, you know, and refreshments. But I want you to enjoy this Christian group. It's a blessing for you. Everybody is welcome. No cost. Come and enjoy it and have a lovely evening and praise the Lord. We're here. It's here. I'm so used to being here, I forgot to say it. It's here. <laughs> Um, tea and coffee is to my right. For those who have come for the first time, you're very welcome again. Uh, we really appreciate your presence here. And there's tea and coffee to my right, which is to your left. Thank you all. God bless. <laughs>